Ever wonder why restaurant quality steaks are mouthwatering and luxurious? While the stuff you buy at the supermarket are bland, tough, meaty, subpar sauce sponges. Well, in addition to sourcing out higher quality meat, most top steakhouses practice an art called dry aging. Basically, they let a hunk of beef dry out. That way, it intenses any beefy flavor it has. And trust me, they don't use whatever crappy plug-in fridge you get at Costco. These are specially designed machines. Scratch that. These are quite expensive specially designed machines. But thankfully, that won't be necessary for today's recipe. So how do we make a steakhouse quality steak at home? Simple. You'll actually have to watch my video. Hey, welcome to post 2012 YouTube where watch time is more important. The era of 2009 era YouTube is dead. Okay, let's begin. And yeah, if uh, this outfit looks familiar, I'm filming this the same day as the sous vide flank steak episode. It's a long, complicated story, but anyway, let's get to the meat. You can dry age anything, but I'm gonna go with ribeye. Specifically, prime ribeye. Yeah, it's prime. You can tell by the sticker right here. And on top of that, it had a lots of nice intermuscular fat. Now, I understand prime beef is a little hard to come by, but but um, you can get this at Costco for relatively cheap prices. Keyword, relatively cheap. And uh, you might have noticed I'm wearing rubber gloves. That's because when aging beef, we got to minimize as much cross-contamination as possible. I mean, come on, we're gonna put it in a fridge for about a month or two. Do you really want bacteria to eat this thing alive? Speaking of dry age, like I said earlier, you don't need a fancy high-tech refrigerator in order to get it. Because for $35, you can go to Amazon and buy one of these. An Umai dry age bag. I won't get too sciencey, but basically this bag helps control the air flow and humidity. So the beef ages, but doesn't rot. All right, let's begin. Open up the bag and uh, let's and let's roll back the lip on this because, like I said, we don't want the outside of the raw meat touching the outside. Again, we're trying to minimize cross contamination. Oh, hey, would you like that? It's already been deboned for me. And uh, dispose of the gloves because they have raw meat on it. And to further minimize cross-contamination, let's put on a new pair of gloves. Okay, these gloves are a big, big for my hand. I'm getting this weird ET finger thing. So let's uh, unfold the lip. Oh, don't make sure this is at the very end of the bag. And now let's vacuum seal it. Now, what's supposed to happen next is that you're supposed to Vacuum seal this. Ooh, two problems. One, the vacuum sealer I purchased was deceptively underpowered. A second, I lost the uh, vacuum seal pads that came with this thing. But thankfully, there's another way. Water displacement. Just place our bag with our meat inside a sink filled with water. You're not gonna, don't worry about getting all the air out, that's fine. Uh, a little uh, trigger happy, aren't we? And uh, let's seal the bag nice and tight. All right, back to the countertop. Okay, next pat this down dry. This is not a perfect seal. That's fine. It doesn't need to be. We just need to have most of the meat come in contact with the skin. Place our meat on top of a cooling rack. This is important because air circulation is super important. And our final step, place it in the fridge. Okay, so we got it in the fridge. Now, how long do we let it age? 30 days. Minimum, but I want that nice deep beefy flavor. So I'm gonna let it go for 45 days Godspeed, mr. Beefy 
Godspeed. Ah, it's been 45 days, and hopefully no one of geopolitical importance died between those days because... Our meat has fully aged. This is truly a work of art. Let's get some Joshua Weissman style B-roll. about the mold. This is called Penicillium naldiovensi. Penicillium naldiovensi. Penicillium naldiovensi. It's the same white powdery mold you find on salami. Besides, don't worry, we're gonna cut this all off. It'll still be good. All right, so when I purchased this back in August, this thing weighed 6.82 pounds. All right, here's the scale. Let's see how much it weighs now. All right, this now weighs 5.15 pounds, so almost a pound and a half. Let's do some quick math here. So that's a weight loss percentage of 24.5%. That's perfect. That's the percentage you want to aim for. I stalled long enough. Let's get to cutting. The first thing we got to do is cut trim off this stuff. It's called pellicle and you do not want to eat that, especially with the mold. Trim this off without cutting too much of the inner meat. Yeah, this stuff looks like prosciutto, although I wouldn't put it on a cracker. Ah, yeah, take out the marbly on this steak. It's totally worth it. Then let's cut our steak into one to one half inch slices. All right, now let's trim off all this outer pedicle. And voila, a nice, beautiful, dry aged steak waiting to be cooked. All right, let me trim up the rest of the steak and... All right, that side of beef produced about five steaks total. And this is how much pellicle we had to remove. Uh, correction, what I had to cut off. You're just a viewer listening to this video to drown out the noise caused by the TV in the other room, which is tuned to cable news. Fox, CNN, MSNBC, Sky, they're all the same to me. They're just to keep the boomers outraged and addicted. So what can we do with the pellicle? Some people like to keep them. I don't know. I don't know, do you really want this ground up in your burger? You do? Either you're an adventurous eater or your standards for quality are super low. Anyway, I have no use for these. I'm gonna toss them. Oh, another thing dry aging does, it tenderizes the meat. You see, not only are you getting more intense flavor, but all the enzymes within the meat are breaking down the connective tissue. Let me just press down my thumb. As you can see, it leaves a pretty noticeable indentation. It kind of feels like super meaty modeling clay. Don't know if it'll make good pottery, but maybe I'll try it one day. Since I'm not gonna be cooking most of these steaks, I'm gonna bag and tag them and freeze them. All right, now that they're all bag and sealed, you can put these in the freezer. Dash them away in the fridge. Or since it's already under vacuum seal. Sous vide it. Now medium rare is at 135-ish, but I'm gonna set the sous vide to 127 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm sitting it below medium rare because by the time I fry it up in the pan, it's gonna heat back up and raise the temperature. So I'm playing it safe. I'm doing 127 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, once this comes up to temp, let this cook for one hour. Okay, it's been an hour and our steak is done cooking. And yes, this looks like the meat equivalent of seasonal depression, but that is until we fry it up on a pan. And that's what we're gonna do. I have here a cast iron skillet, and we're gonna set that over high heat. Let that heat up for five minutes. 
Okay, once the pan heats up, let's toss in a tablespoon of oil. And let's place our steak in the pan. But while it's cooking, let's season it with some salt and some pepper. Uh, uh, oh boy, gonna have to turn on the hood. Another thing about dry aged meat, it caramelizes quickly, so don't take your eye off this too long. Okay, after two minutes, flip to the other side. All right, a nice, beautiful Maillard reaction. That's what we want. Oh, uh, let's season the other side. Oh, and uh, since this is an extra thick cut of steak, uh, let's sear the sides as well. All right, we got a nice Maillard on all sides. Transfer it to a plate. Let it rest for five minutes. I think that should give me enough time to de-smoke the kitchen. All right, our steak is done resting, and most importantly, the smoke has cleared out. I might have breathed in so much, I might have given myself cancer, but hey, I have one hell of a last meal. Just come to it as you would any other steak. Whoa, either this knife is super sharp or this beef is really tender. Finally, I know what real meat tastes like. Um, let me know right now, once you know how to nail this, you don't have to take your date to a fancy restaurant anymore. Just whip up one of these. She's gonna go up a few dress sizes a few months in, but hey. Bones are for dogs. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm Zia Day, making cooking fun and meaning this time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Thursday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and support me on Patreon. Seriously, seriously, I do not understand the appeal of late 2000s era YouTube. What was so innovative and groundbreaking about a cross-dressing white dude crying about Britney Spears?